Rafael Zagunas, Olympic and world champion fencer. And today's tip is going to be on variations of your advances. Now, typically, you learn to advance with the same speed and same distance of your steps. It looks like this. Advancing, advancing, advancing. All the time keeping your legs, you know, shoulder width apart, and same thing with retreat. You're leading with your back leg, going into retreat. You're leading with your front leg, going with advances. Now, as you can see, all of these steps that I'm taking are about the same distance and about the same speed. But what I'm going to teach you today is to really mix it up. An important thing about fencing is to be unpredictable. And if your steps are unpredictable, then your opponent doesn't really know if you're coming close or you're going to be far away or when your attack is going to start or whatever. So the important thing today, what I'm going to teach you, is variation in your advances. And we're going to start with doing a long, short, long attack. Okay, so instead, if we have Ola standing here, and I could very easily hit her with two advances, maybe that's not the right distance. You have to understand that fencing is a game of millimeters, and so you want to make sure that you're having the right distance between you and your opponent. Sometimes <clears throat> two advances aren't going to be enough, so you need to mix it up. And how I'm going to mix it up with her is I'm going to do long. Okay, the distance is very now close, so I'm going to take a short step and then a long step to hit her. Now if I took, those were three steps, if I took three normal advances, I probably would be too close to her. See, it doesn't work like that. So it's important to recognize the distance that you need and take the proper steps. So to hit her, I'm going to go long, very close now, so I'm going to go short, and then long to hit her. So it's important to realize how close your opponent is to you, how much of a threat their counterattack might be, and therefore, you take the proper size of steps to make sure that you don't get hit. So one more time, it looks like this. This is the distance that we have between each other right now. I'm going to go long, short, long. And it's the proper distance for me to hit her. The same thing, can, you can mix it up again and maybe go short, long, short, depending on the type of distance that it is. So this looks like this. You go short. Okay, she's still kind of far away from me, so I'm going to take a longer step. And now she's very close, so I'm going to take a short step. Okay, it's all about the distance. It's all about feeling out your opponent and feeling how close they are to you. So again, if it's short, long, short. I'll show you that one more time. Short, long, short. And you hit them at the right time, at the right place. Now, this is a really good drill that you can do um, when you're doing footwork by yourself, you don't necessarily have to practice on an opponent. This is something that I do almost every single day when I'm doing extra footwork before and after practice. Um, you know, it's good for your coordination, it's good for your mind, so you're not just going along with the same types of steps, you know, not really paying attention to it. Using these types of steps really make you think about the distance, it makes you think about the steps that you're taking, and, you know, it helps with your coordination. So one more time. We're going to go long, short, long, and it looks like this. Long, short, long. Okay? Or short, long, short, short, long, short. And this doesn't just apply to advances. Sometimes you can use it as a retreat, too, which um, works for attack and preparation, for parries. You know, it's all across the board. Variation in your steps is a very important thing. I'm Marielle Zagunas, and this is your tip of the day. Thanks for watching.